Hello, everyone. I'm Sang Ori. I'm a researcher of Microsoft Research. Today, I will present Apron, an authenticated and progressive system immune innovation. Apron is a mechanism to realize secure, efficient, and practical device recovery. We are using computing devices or systems like desktop, laptop, and smartphone every day. If they work as designed and are expected, it can benefit from their write, write, writing document and sending some text messages. However, due to several reasons, these devices can be cut up and no longer work. When you turn on your devices, you might see some error messages like your device is cut up or your device needs to be repaired. Until you repair or recover these devices, they will refuse to boot and you might have no chance to use these devices as expected. Why our devices or system corrupt? Who corrupt them and how? There might be three notable cases. First, the system might be corrupted due to some attack or something like malware. For example, ransomware would be the most popular example that try to encrypt some important files stored in your devices. After that, your system will not work. Second, the system might get corrupted due to some software and hardware errors, like file system error or something like that. Third, the, another example is that the, the system might be corrupted due to some postponed update or patches. We say that our some outdated, outdated, device, uh, outdated system is corrupt because you can no longer ensure its valid operations. Regardless of the root cause of this system corruption, we must recover the system to use it again. Then how do we recover our devices at prison? I will explain this in five stages. First, due to some reasons, our devices were corrupt, like some attack, error, some, or mismeasurement. Second, some time later, system corruption could be detected. This system possibly learns some internal or external signals, like telemetry. Third, if the system corruption is recognized, we would first reset the system by physically pressing each power button or remotely sending some management commands through IPMI or PMC. Fourth, the three steps make the system enter some recovery environment to repair it. Finally, after the recovery, the system gets reset again and runs normally. Let us take a look at the, what the recovery environment does in detail. So, the recovery, the, the basically, the recovery environment is of some separate execution environment which contains several recovery related tools like some file system checker or file downloader. Typically, this recovery environment deployed as some minimal operating system based on general purpose operating system like Linux or Windows. The recovery environment uh, fully, re basically, the recovery environment fully recovered the corrupt system image storage based on some reference image it download or stored in the system. Typically, the recovery environment uh, <laughs> download up to the system image from a remote location like some HTTPS server or CDN server, or use some system images that are stored in safe location. The recovery environment re-images the device using the reference image and verify whether the repaired one is correct. If it is correctly recovered, the, it restarts the system and tries to run it normally. All these procedures are very straightforward and works for most cases. However, its critical limitation has been overlooked so far. Uh, one observation we have is that during recovery, basically the system does not work. Yeah, because unlike the general operating system, this recovery uh, environment is basically designed for this recovery, environment, uh, this recovery task, and then it doesn't contain any meaningful applications. That is, it does not uh, ship with some kind of web browser or word processor we wanted to use. Instead, it only contains some file system checker or a file, a file downloader. Because of that, we cannot, use this, uh, we cannot use this system while the recovery environment is fixing it. All this implies that any actions that uh, potentially delay all this recovery procedure will lengthen the system downtime and decrease the overall system availability. For example, if the reference image uh, file size is large, like several, or several tens of gigabytes, downloading it would take a long time. File compression or file decompression would de relieve this problem. But still, we need to decompress this file to access it and then to re-image the system. Also, re-imaging the system itself, as well as the verifying the final result, uh, take a long time. There are some existing efforts to reduce this overall recovery time, but all of them have their own limitations. 
First, instead of downloading a large system image file on demand, one can use some one can use an image file which was stored in the local storage before. One example is some using something like AB partitions to rapidly switch between rapidly switching this uh, new and old partition to boot from. However, like the main system partition, this extra partition can also be corrupted and outdated. So we have no way to ensure each uh, each validity and each freshness. Second, instead of fully limiting the system partition, one might try to inspect each file or data block to selectively fix corrupt ones. However, this delta recovery is in fact very slow because it requires additional different calculations. Further, this delta recovery can result in scattered disk update because it designed to minimize the write operation or something. But that means that it, it, it would be very it is slower than some simple full disk re re-imaging because as you know, modern, modern philosophy devices are highly, highly optimized for sequential operations rather than random state operations. From now on, I will spend our two key ideas to realize an efficient and secure recovery mechanism to minimize the system downtime due to recovery. The, but the first idea we have is that we try to defer the recovery of file or data block as much as possible until they are actually needed. This deferred or rated recovery mechanism makes sense because we do not need a completely recovered system to start it or boot it. In particular, during system boot, we only require a small part of the system image like uh, operating system kernel or any LMFS. Also, even during the system execution, we only need some part of the system image required to run some active task we usually use. For example, if we might barely use some program like Telnet or many other tiny application that nobody uses. In that case, we do not need to recover this kind of, applic it is kind of application that urgently. All this allows us to selectively and partially recover the system in the recovery environment and then the partially recovered system can progressively recover the remaining part on demand or in, a, some, uh, in advanced manner. Second, the, the while performing this progressive or on demand recovery, we must ensure that the data that application would be served should be the, should be the expected one or correct one. To ensure this, we verify every storage access to detect any data block contained in valid content. Then, whenever we find some invalid uh, the data block that contain invalid block, we try to recover it first before set, serving them to the application. In other words, we aim to ensure that application will always get valid data when they access system storage, no matter whether we defer this recovery or not. So, and then to realize this, we interpose every storage access. Basically, whenever an application try request a data block, we verify each content with authenticated metadata, and then and if we found that it is corrupted or outdated, we try to return the data block only after we recover the data. Uh, to ensure the consistent and secure device management, we assume that the uh, April assume basically assume that we April basically assume an image-based operating system, which is also known as an immutable operating system. In the image-based operating system, basically, the management server builds an up-to-date system image and they provision it to all management managed devices. Uh, and in the uh, image-based operating system, the operating system kernel basically enforces the read-only property of the system image to prevent application from tampering with it. Typically, it uses the embedded or read-only file system to ensure read-only property. In addition, it stores and manages our mutable computation and data in a separate partition to ensure some uh, uh, personalization and any other customization. APRON also tried to, APRON basically aim to ensure, uh, aim, aim, aim to ensure make each, each kind of devices will maintain each system image in a valid form, even though each recovery might be, even though each recovery might be deferred. And from now on, I'll explain how APRON works from each preparation page to runtime page. Apron starts from <coughs> the management server's metadata preparation. Uh, when our system image gets updated, the management server calculates a hash tree of each image. Then, the management server signs the hash tree's root hash value, which is concatenated with the with a monetary version number to, to prevent any uh, rollback attack. 
Lastly, the management server serves the sys image and signed the metadata through various deployment channels. Once the sys image and signed metadata are ready, the apron device can boot normally with re all these recovery activities. In particular, apron device relies on minimal boot environment known as LinLMFS to download and verify the latest metadata if it is available. Then, by using this apron metadata, the apron device creates a storage layer over the system storage to interpose every access to the storage. This figure depicts how the apron storage layer works. The apron, <coughs> the apron storage layer is located within the kernel and to intervene with any, every, any access to the system storage. And basically, and basically any application direct access to the system storage is prohibited. So we do not allow this kind of uh, direct access. And when a belong is requested, the apron storage layer always tries to verify each content using the hash, block hash tree. And if there's any hash mismatch, apron tries to repair the request block before returning, returning this to the application. Let me explain apron's overall on-demand innovation procedure for valid block. First, an application requests a data block, and this request is intercepted by apron. Second, apron retrieves the corresponding block from the system storage and then try to verify it using Merkle hash tree. So if the apron confirms that this request block contains valid content, it doesn't do anything but just serve the data to the application. Uh, this second figure explains how apron recovers an invalid block. Like the previous figure, an application data block request is intercepted and verified by apron. Here, April has recognized that the request block contains embedded content according to the hash tree. To fix this corruption, April now interacts with a remote deployment server to download a, a corresponding block, data block from it and then verify it again using the hash tree. And it confirmed that this data, this dispatch data is, va uh, this dispatch data is valid. April serves it, this data to the application and then finally it repairs the local block by using it. Apron on-demand recovery works well if the network is fast and reliable. However, in practice, uh, devices and server might be connected through some slow network, and the network might be unreliable. This, this might result in some runtime overhead and error. Apron tried try to overcome this problem by using a background prefetcher, which recovers not yet requested block. And the goal of this background picture is, is to recover the entire system, eventually, entire system storage eventually, but uh, slowly but eventually. To, to not disrupt other workload, basically the background picture wakes up only if there is no in-flight storage access by other active thread. Unlike the on-demand innovation, the background picture patch repair consecutive invalid block. Namely, it prioritizes throughput over latency. Starting from the first unidentified block, it sequentially inspects all unidentified, un all unidentified block until it finds a valid block. And then it recovers this, and then it recovers, it tries to recover all these consecutive invalid blocks together in a batch, man in a batch manner. Another optimization mechanism April has is, is in place system innovation based on deduplication. The goal of this inference derivation is, is, if possible, it tries to fix request block using an equivalent block which is already in the storage. This allows Apron to less frequently interact with the server to reduce the stress of the server and the network. This inference innovation is based, based on static and dynamic deduplication information. As static deduplication information, the measurement server analyzes the reference image to pre-compute a set of equivalent block and share it with the client devices. And during recovery and during execution, the client devices keep track of whether any block belong to, belonging to each set is fetched. Later, when apron needs to recover a block, it uses a remote block only if, the, if only if the request block is a unique one or none of each equivalent block has been fetched. This figure explains this in-place renovation for invalid block. And unlike the on, unlike the on-demand renovation I explained, April now checks the deduplicate information to see whether a request block 
has an in-storage in equivalent block. In this example, block 0 and block 2 are equivalent, and block 2 has been fetched before. Because, therefore, when April needs to recover this block 0, block 0 later, it can use block 2's content to reno renovate the block 0 instead of trying to batch, instead try to download it block zero from a remote server. From now on, I explain our evaluation result. And for this evaluation, we used one client devices and two different servers. One, our client devices basically are features of a typical six core desktop CPU and P one PCIe and VME SSD. And one of our servers is within the local area network that the client machine is also connected to. And the bandwidth of this local area network is one gigabit per second. And this server machine has four core desktop CPU and SATA SSD. And the second server is a virtual machine in Azure, uh, which is connected to the, this client machine via a 100 megabit bit per second wide area network. This server features a two core vir server class virtual CPU and virtual SSD. And as a system image, we use 10, 10, G, 10, TG, and 10 gigabyte of Open server installation as a system image. And we render and for to test some corruption, we randomly corrupt one percent, one percent to one hundred percent of this image to evaluate recovery time and run time overhead according to the corruption ratio. First, we evaluate the system downtime due to recovery according to the corruption ratio and network performance. When we use the fast network server, the system downtime of apron is 12.3 times to 27.9 times shorter than that of full recovery. Apron is especially better when the full recovery, Apron is especially better than the full recovery when the corruption ratio is low. And we think that this is practical because uh, in normally the, even the attacker do not try to fully wipe out the entire system storage. And when, you, when, when we use the slow network server, the system downtime of April is 4.8 times to 11.8 times shorter than that of full recovery. April of it is still slow and, and the corruption ratio is low. In addition, we also check the delta recovery, delta recovery state downtime. And we confirm that this delta recovery is always slower than both full recovery and April. Next, we evaluate the runtime of the apron when it recovers the system partition during execution. For this evaluation, we choose 11 benchmark from Polonis test suite, suite and then run one of the them, one of, run one of them as soon as the operation is put up by modifying the system deconfiguration. And we fully cut the system storage and use the slow network server for this evaluation because and when we use the when use local net, local server and the, the fat local server and then we, and the partially recover, partially corrupt the system storage, the, the Polonis test suite, the old benchmark always, and always, uh, recovery always take shorter than the, this uh, benchmark execution. So instead we try to slow down the recovery process by using slow network server and uh, full corruption, full corrupted system image. And on average, April's runtime over is only 99% when we, it, even when it actively try to renovate, renovate the system partition. Also, each runtime overhead is negligible once the renovation is done. And as expected, Apron's operation during this execution affect I.O. intensity workload like MemcacheD, whose performance decreased by up to 21%. And in contrast, the CPU intensity workload like PyBench were barely affected. Apron eventually renovated the entire system partition using the background prefetcher. Thus, we try to compare the completion rate complete renovation time of April with that of full or delta recovery. When the network slope between the device and the server is high, April's complete renovation time is similar to that of full recovery. In contrast, if the network throughput of between the de device and the server is low and the corruption ratio is, corruption ratio is high, April's complete renovation time is worse than that of full recovery. Consequently, we confirm that even though April's background preparation runs with a low priority, April can efficiently renovate this entire system partition. If network throughput is high, uh, the image corruption ratio is low, or both. And let me summarize and conclude my talk. Uh, existing recovery mechanism is slow, which makes the system unavailable for a long time until the system is fully recovered. 
Apron tried to overcome this problem by securing default in recovery to ensure immediate system availability. In this end, April ensures short system downtime for recovery while ensuring low runtime overhead, even if it recovers the system by learning everyday workload. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions.